Hey, Coach, so glad you made it to, to YouTube here. And you must be a basketball coach looking for resources. If you are, I got the answer for you. Go over and check out teachhoops.com. Click up here, click down there. Um, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Uh, I think you'll really enjoy the video. So enjoy it and um, hope to see you in our, in our community at www.teachhoops.com. Thanks. Named my talk. Um, what I'm going to do is talk about myself a little bit because I think uh, to get where I've been, you have to know a little bit about my background. Uh, I played, uh, I grew up on the east side of Madison. I played four years of high school basketball for, for John Boyle at Madison East. Um, went there, went from there to, to play college basketball at Lawrence University for, for four years and then uh, got my first teaching job in Wausau, Wisconsin, which is northern Wisconsin. Um, was there for seven years. One of some great coaches that I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, and then was going to get married, decided we wanted to move, and uh, came down to Madison, got a head job here, and um, from there um, got the head job. Um, you know, two, two years, I, I, the two years at Memorial, um, you know, I never really actually thought I'd be the head coach, but, you know, I was, always hoped that it would come about. You know, I was the only applicant for this job um, when it started, and um, you know, we had a long way to go. We weren't a very good basketball team when I, when I took over this program. Uh, <clears throat> my first season, we were 7-14, um, and we weren't very good. You know, we, lo <laughs> we lost 10 games in a row, and I, I remember sitting in that, in that regional final locker room with one of my assistant coaches talking and saying, you know, can we, can we win a basketball game? Um, you know, I, I can't do this for the next 25, 30 years. I, I'm going to have to do something else. And... I remember over the next six to eight months, we came up with what we, you know, basically our mission statements, what we thought were 20 keys to us being successful. And our first goal wasn't to win a state championship. But, you know, our first, our first goal was to, to be competitive and win, win a few games and win our, beat our rival and then eventually maybe win a conference championship and, and go from there. But um, I think these are the keys. It doesn't matter if you're a youth coach. It doesn't matter if you're a high school coach. I think these are the keys to, to winning, getting any program to be successful. Um, and that's what I'm going to, you know, over 20 years of coaching, these are the things that I've kind of found to be core values that I think are extremely important um, for anybody to have. All right, the first thing that I'm going to talk about, and, and I, think, I think this is extremely important. When I, when I got the job here, uh, you know, 11 years ago, I had, a, I had to hire a couple coaches. And, and it's really important when you're hiring coaches to find people you trust and, trust pe and people that are loyal. Um, you know, Corey Moore who has been with me for 11 years. You know, I've been, I've been blessed that for, for the last, you know, 11 years, I've basically kept my core coaching staff together. And I think that's good. Um, I think it's good for a couple reasons. I think it's good because we kind of know we, who, how we think. Um, you know, we know that, you know, how I'm going to behave, how my sophomore coach is going to behave, you know, what's our strengths, what's our weaknesses. And I think that's really important to have a successful program. I think one of the reasons that we've, you know, got two silver balls and, and two gold, uh, three silver balls and two gold balls in the showcase is because we've had continuity. You know, we've had the same people here um, with the same vision, which is what I'm talking about here. You know, our vision has always been to win basketball games. Um, it's not always been easy for us, um, but, you know, I, I, it's been important. Um, another important thing, and over time I've tried to do this more and more, is get coaches in the building. I think it's really important to get coaches in the building. Um, if you're going to be successful, it's, be it's best to have people in the building. I personally would not take a head coaching job unless I was in the building. And the reason I feel so strongly about that is because it's the relationships that you build. It's relationships you build with administrators, the teachers, the kids, the community, everything. It's hard to do it if you're working a job eight to four outside the building. You can't go grab a specific kid third hour and talk to them about something that's going on in their life. Um, or maybe they're having a hard time with this teacher. Or having a hard time at home or they just broke up with their girlfriend or whatever it is, you got to be able to communicate. And uh, I think it's really important for any of you that are going to be high school coaches, I think it's really important to try to be in the building and have as many coaches as you can. And that's gotten harder and harder. You know, coaching is a tough profession. You know, there's not a lot of, uh, a lot of people who clamoring to be high school coaches. So, you know, it's a difficult thing to do. But um, I think you really got to be in the building. Um, I think that's extremely important. School. Um, you know, when I was in Wausau, I remember sitting in my living room thinking, okay, where could I go to be successful? Because my goal was always to be a, a, a head high school coach. You know, I was an assistant. I knew I had to pay my dues. You know, I, got, I didn't get the first job I applied for. Um, 
but I, I sat with the WI handbook and I went through basically the 400 schools that are in Wisconsin and, and put little stars by the ones that I thought could win or would win or that I could possibly get a job at. Um, not necessarily in that order. And the funny thing is Memorial was on that list. I still have that, that, that uh, handbook that I kind of marked up. And I always thought Memorial was a sleeping giant. I always thought that, gosh, if you get there and you get some kids, you can win some basketball games. So I think you got to go in with an open mind. You got to have other people look in. You know, um, I think when you pick a school, you got to look at the atmosphere. You know, obviously there's quote unquote football schools, there's wrestling schools, there's basketball schools. You know, Memorial was not a basketball school when I took over the job. Memorial was a swimming and hockey school. Um, and I'm proud to say that I think we've kind of shifted that a little bit and people think about Memorial basketball now when they think of Madison Memorial. So you can always change the atmosphere. It's a difficult thing to do. You got to win some basketball games to do that. Um, but I think you got to look, can I overcome that obstacle? Can I overcome the atmosphere that's there. You know, this has been a wrestling school for 50 years. Can I overcome that? And if you if you think you can, and that that might be a job you want to pursue, um, and that that goes under the can you win? You know, can you get the players? Um, can you get the guys, the community, the administration, everyone to buy into the stuff that we're going to talk about that that it takes to have a championship team? Um, and it comes down more to than just having players. It, players are very important, but it comes down more to that and community. You know, it's you know we're we're in our uh, in our urban setting, 250, 300,000 people. Um, you know, I, I understand how that works. It's it's a little different in the small towns, but you know, can you win in that community? You know, basketball tends to be an urban game, um, but you know, I, could I have won if I had stayed in Wausau? You know, Jason Teske's been there for for gosh 10 years and he's won his share and gone to the state semifinals and, and he's done a wonderful job but you know is that where I wanted to go or what, what, where, what was I looking for something else so I think you got to ask yourself and you got to be honest and maybe you got to ask people that aren't so directly connected to the game to look at those things um, last thing is players okay you got to have players okay you, you, uh, you know I forgot where I read it but you can't have a donkey run the Kentucky Derby Okay, it ain't gonna work. You know, you're not gonna take a jalopy and go do the Indy 500. You're not gonna win. Okay, so you gotta have players. You do have to have players. So how do you get players? Well, youth development is important. You know, um, luckily when I took over this job, the youth program was kind of set by my predecessor, Bruce Dahman. Um, it was set to the Tri-County. The young kids are playing. Um, you know, they have a basketball in their hands. You know, we had to compete against a hockey stick in their hands or they're swimming year round. Um, so you got to develop that tradition that, hey, you're in third grade, you should be playing basketball. Um, so I think that's an important thing. You know, we, you, we can't go out and get our players. You know, we're not college coaches. I need a four, I'm going to go recruit a four. So you got to try to find people and develop the youth. Um, you got to have a plan. Um, how are you going to develop it? How are you going to get youth coaches? Who's going to run it? How, does, how is it going to get financed? How are they going to be involved in the high school program? Um, all that stuff has got to be important, and you got to put some thought into it. You know, we have we have one that kind of runs itself now, which is nice. I don't have to deal a lot with it, um, but you know, it took a lot of time and a lot of man hours, like I said, for my predecessor to get that going and get it moving. You know, I think we're up to 12 teams of that youth that youth program. Um, you know, there's different places too. You know, we have the boys and girls club. We have kids that don't play in our youth program that eventually play for me. You know, they play boys and girls club. They play AAU. They play a different basketball. So it all depends. You just got to be open-minded. You got to know there's people in the community that are looking out for kids and looking for opportunities for them to participate. Um, you got to find, when I'm looking for players, I'm looking for hard workers and I'm looking for basketball players. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm looking for kids that want to work hard. Okay, it's no different than, I'm a math teacher by profession, it's no different than looking for a good pre-calculus student. What am I looking for? I'm looking for a kid that's coming in for help, a kid that's going to do their homework, a kid that's going to spend the time, they're going to ask questions, blah, blah, blah. You're going to have to do the exact same thing with a basketball player. Okay, coaching is teaching. And, you know, you got to look for people that want to get better. If they do, they will. You know, Derek Nikemji, um, two years ago, he's playing at Edgewood College now, was a kid that was a hard worker. Didn't play his junior year. Um, was a role guy, didn't like it, came to talk to me, didn't want to sit on the bench going into his senior year, worked extremely hard, um, became a very good basketball player, already was, became even a better basketball player, and was a huge part of us getting to the state finals. 
Um, now he's now he's having a successful college career, and I just saw his uh, college coach the other the other day, and he just says he's doing a wonderful job and he's a wonderful kid. So those are the kind of kids you're looking for. You want basketball players. You know, I, I look for kids that are competitors, and I look for basketball players. Now, what do I mean by competitors? And I and I have one of these at home, a seven-year-old that hopefully he's going to be a basketball player someday. But he's a competitor. He'll play checkers. He'll play Monopoly. He'll play whatever he's going to do, and he doesn't want to lose. Okay, that's the kind of kid I want. Um, you know, obviously, I want guys that basketball is a very high priority, and it's something that they love and they want to do. But um, I, you know, if they're playing football, that's great. They're competing. You know, if they're if if they're playing basketball year round, great. They're competing. I just want them to be competitive. I want them to want to win. And part of the reason that we've won some of our state titles is because we've had competitive kids um, that want to win basketball games. So, you know, I think you got to think to yourself what's important. What kind of kid am I looking for? What kind of kid can I get, and uh, and go from there? So three things, you know, looking, and this is not necessarily the most important. I'm not the, the numbers don't necessarily mean anything here, but I think the if you're building a foundation, you got to find the right people, the right school, and the right players. If you're going to build from the bottom up, like we had to do, and when we weren't very successful, I think you got to have these three things. If you have any one of those three missing, it's going to be difficult to turn a program that hasn't won like Memorial, um, around to a winner. And we've been blessed. We've had all three of these. We've had a great, I got a great school, a great administration that's supportive. I got great coaches and I got great players. If you get those three, it's going to make a pretty good mixture. So um, you got to ask yourself if they've got all those. And if they do, I think, it, you know, any program can be turned around and be, and be successful, no matter where it's, it's been. All right, next thing I want to talk about is well-defined roles. This is, a, this is extremely important. Um, we spend a lot of time on roles. Um, I don't think sometimes adults are always honest with kids. I'm, I'm brutally honest sometimes to the point where, you know, I think when they get a little bit older, they, they respect that. Um, everybody in the program needs to know where they stand. Doesn't matter if it's the freshman coach, doesn't matter if it's the varsity assistant, doesn't matter if it's the 14th guy on the bench or the first guy, they need to know where they fit. Um, not everybody can be the star. Not everybody can score 35 points a game. Not everybody, um, you know, can be in the headlines of the sports page. It's not going to happen, okay? And, you know, I think you have to be honest with them when, when you're talking to them about, okay, you're, this is what your role is. This is what you expect. And what, the way we do it in our program is we kind of sit back. You know, I got an idea of who my starters might be. This year, actually, I, you know, it's probably pretty wide open, but you kind of got an idea. You know, Vander started for two years. He's probably going to start for me again. But I don't know where everybody's going to fit. So I always kind of sit back for about a month, let things work out the way they can, see them in practice, see them in a scrimmage, see them in a couple games. And then what we do is we sit down with each kid and tell them, here's your role. You, you know, your role is, you know, you're going to be a shooter, you're going to be a defender, you're our, I see you as our eighth man. This is what, these are the, these are the things that I expect you to do in practice. These are the things I expect you to do in a game. You better rebound. You better do this, that, and the other thing. And I hand it to them. And, I, and everybody sees everybody's role. Okay? It's a big, big packet. You know, John knows uh, Sam's role. R Sam knows John's role. Okay? They're handed to it. They're talked to it. I say, take it home. Talk to your parents about it. You know, we can discuss this further. But this is where I see you now. Can these roles change? Absolutely. And I try to do that. Christmas breaks are, or winter breaks always a good time to do that. Um, but you got to look for unselfish players, okay? You know, it goes back to good people and good players. When you're, when you're looking for people, you need to, you know, our stars, you know, I've been lucky to have four Mr. Basketballs. Every one of them has been an unselfish player, you know? So if you can make your star an unselfish player and make them better, I think that's going to make your team better. You know, I, I think of a story with, with my, uh, last year we lost in the state finals in, 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 uh, 2008 and, um, Jerron Maiman had a, an extraordinary state final game. He had four, 35, 40 points and basically took, took, him, took, took the team on his back. Basically, all we ended up losing promise the state of Wisconsin. We were, but you like that he's confident. But anyway, we sat down and talked, and I, and I told Jerron, I said, Jerron, if we're going to do this, here's what's got to happen. Okay, people are going to kill you. People are going to do these things. I, how can we get other guys involved? How can we get involved or Trey involved or some of these younger guys or the freshmen involved? Anything like that, how can I involved? And he was willing to take a backseat. So it came around where we needed somebody to hit a shot or something. 
Um, and it's, he got double teamed the only whole year. I think the game he was single teamed was the state finals, and I think he had 25, something like that. So you got to look for guys willing to buy in. We've won state championships because of our role, guys. Um, you know, I can honestly say that a title in 2005 in a state championship game in the early in the third quarter, we fall out of the game. And, uh, you know, I left him in different things with moving people around. And uh, my six and seven, Gerard Ajami and Tyler will step in and they had the games of their lives in the state finals. Um, same thing this year. You know, we had an injury. We had to uh, remove someone from the team this year. And uh, two of my starters were basically gone from my roster come tournament time. What does that mean? It means all of a sudden six, seven, eight. Are, are one of them, a couple of them are staying. Um, you know, that's the reason we won state championships. And, and it's a difficult thing as a coach. I know, um, you know, I've, I'm guilty of this sometimes. Only playing five, six, seven guys, feeling really comfortable with those guys. You got to try to find the role guys some minutes. You got to try to find them, a, a, they feel welcome, that they're going to feel successful. They're going to feel like they can, they can do what you need them to do. Because you know what? You're an ankle injury, an injury, uh, you know, a school related issue, whatever it is. From losing a guy, so if you've developed those role players, you never know. Your role player might help you win a state championship. And from someone that's won a couple, I can tell you that, that my role guys have stepped in. Um, I, it, I forced myself, to be honest with you, I forced myself during the season to develop that bottom half. Hard, you know. I get, I want to play these seven guys and develop them, but you know, I really work. You know, the style we play up and down the court, I really work on seven through eleven and trying to get them wherever I can. Um, and it's easier, obviously, if you're winning some games by big margins. But I always try to get them, get them in, involved, get them, in, um, get them uh, scoring and shooting and playing some quality minutes. So de define roles. I think as a coach, just like a teacher, you know, you got to tell the kids what your expectations are. You know, here's your role in my class. Here's what I expect from you. You are an A student. You better get an A. You know, why aren't you working harder? So I think you have to. To, to talk to the kids and tell them what you expect from them. And if you do, 99.9% .9 of the time, the kids understand their role and they know where they fit. You know, that one-tenth of a percent, uh, they might not, okay? Next thing I'm going to talk about, and this one I think I've gotten, uh, I've gotten better with age, um, is getting out of their way, okay? Um, you know, I think you can overcoach, to be honest with you. Um, you know, once March comes around, you should have everything you need in. You should have all the plays in. You should have talked to your kids. Everything should be okay. Don't overcoach your kids. Um, you know, we all want to get the clipboard out and boom, 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 and show everybody that perfect play that we can diagram in the last 30 seconds to win the state title. Well, I can tell you something. I've had to draw those out, and they have, neither one of them have worked. I think I draw pretty good plays. Okay, you got to get out of their way. You know, I've changed my philosophy at the end of a game. I'm not calling a timeout. I'm letting them come down and I'm letting them score. Um, so don't overthink a it game. It's a, it's a simple game. Okay, it's a game about putting the ball in the hole. That's all it is. Okay, it's a one man, one on one game, two on two game, three on three game. It's not a difficult game. We as coaches know a lot. Okay, we got to convey what we know to our kids, um, but don't boggle their mind with all the stuff they don't need. Okay, you know, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. You, we can overcoach them. You know, we, we try to narrow the things down. Um, you know, come tournament time, you know, I can tell you this year, we, I was diagram, I was putting in new defenses, new offenses, new, and all of a sudden I looked over at my guys at the beginning of February this year, um, and they looked like deer in headlights. They, I was throwing too much stuff at them. And the best thing I did this year was I took a step back and I said, here you go, guys, here's the ball, go play like I taught you how to play. And they, you know, they want a state title. So I think that's what you got to do. You got to let players play. If you start changing things, if you start doing things that you haven't been doing, they'll panic. Okay? You'll, they'll panic. They'll not feel good about themselves. And you'll, you will have issues. So I think what, as a coach, you got to get out of their way. You got to let them play the game. If you've done your job, they will perform. Okay? If, if you've done all the stuff that you need to do basically all year long, they will be fine come tournament time. If you prepared them for the final exam, they will be fine um, come the tournament time. So you got to get out of their way. You got to just let them perform. And, and when you do that, good things happen. All right, next thing. Let me look here. Um, what do you look for in a player? Okay, so what we've talked about so far, you know, we talked about finding the right people, finding the right location, finding the right school. Extremely important. Finding the proper roles for those players. Okay, Getting out of their way and letting them play. 
But what kind of players do you want to look for? Okay, what do you want to look for in a player? I look for a player that can score and can handle the ball. Okay, I, you know, maybe it's me, but I feel like I can teach them the rest of the game. You know, I can teach them the proper way to get in a defensive stance. I can teach them how to trap in the half court. I can't teach them how to score in four months. I can't teach them how to handle the ball. Um, obviously, I put shoot free throws, limited turnovers, handle pressure, but they got to be able they got to be able to put the ball in the hole. Okay, and they got to be able to handle it. If they can do those two things, I can teach them not to turn the ball over. I can teach them the proper way to box out. I can teach them some of those things in four or five months, but I can't teach them how to shoot a basketball in three or four months. I can't do it. All right, so that you know, I, we spend a lot of time, and I think especially for you youth coaches, handling the ball is extremely important. Anybody that you know, I have a seven-year-old at home, and we don't do a lot of shooting. We do a lot of ball handling, and the reason I think it is is because the person that handles the ball dictates the game. If you can handle the ball, you will dictate the game. So, um, scoring and handling the ball, I think, is in, extremely important. I know coaches, we all have our pet peeves. We all have things that we think are extremely important to us. You know, there's, I basically have three pet peeves that I communicate with my players. First one is turnovers, okay? We don't like turnovers, okay? Turnovers are bad. Um, and the reason that they're bad is every time you turn the ball over, it's three points you can score and three points the opponent can score. So we emphasize every day, and we keep it simple. You know, we have three things that we emphasize every day in practice that we talk about, we beat up. You know, I could, I could call, you know, uh, Wesley Matthews or Michael Nelson, you know, they've been out of school for four or five years. Ask them what my pet peeves were, and they probably could tell you what the pet peeves were. So the first one is turning the ball over. They can't do that. You got to look for players that can take care of the ball. Second thing is they got to be able to close out. Okay, it's a simple thing. I don't care if it's a two-handed closeout. I don't care if it's a one-handed closeout. I don't care what it is. We're not going to let people have open shots. Okay, um, it's the math teacher in me, but I know that the percentage of the percentage shooter goes down as they get a hand up. As they contest, that percentage drops 10 to 15%. So we work on closing out. No one takes an open shot in our gym. And the third thing we talk about is no easy baskets. Now that's a difficult thing for us in our style. And the reason it's difficult is we pressure. We trap. We, we come at you. It, we, it's control chaos, to be honest with you. And we're going to pick you up in the full court, and we're going to trap you, and we're going to make you make plays. It's difficult not to give up layups. It's a difficult thing to do. You know, my guys have a hard time with it, but we don't want to give up easy baskets. We want to get easy baskets by, by turning them over, um, but we don't want to get easy baskets. Now, that might not be the style you play, but you can't, be, you can't give up layups and expect to win the game. So, you know, does that, where does that fit into players? Well, obviously, they've got to be able to score and handle the ball. I got to find players that are willing not to turn the ball over, close out, and have no easy shots. So these two are the most important, and then our points of emphasis throughout the season. You know, I, my guy, I, I'm not going to throw 35 things at him. I can't remember everything we do. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm just going to whatever you emphasize and practice every day, whatever you're talking to your kids about, that's what they're going to remember. Um, so you got to sit down and think, okay, what do I want my kids to be good at? Do I want them to be good defend? Do I want to play pack defense, Dick Bennett defense? How do I want to teach that? Do I, is that one of the things? Because you can't have a list of 55 things that you want to emphasize. Um, if you, you don't have time. You're a high school coach. You get them from November to March, and boom, they're gone. So we, we, we got to find players that can score and handle the ball, and we'll teach them not to turn the ball over. We'll teach them how to close out. We'll teach them how to get back on defense and not have easy baskets. So we can do that kind of stuff. So... I think as a high school coach, or if, if you want to win championships, you got to find these players. You got to develop them. You can you can get a score, okay? Scores you can find scores. Get a shooting machine. Get them in the gym. Get the ten thousand shot club. Do whatever you got. I always tell our our youth players, shooting is like lifting weights, okay? If you sit and lift weights, what's going to happen? You're going to get stronger, okay? If you sit home and do math problems all day, what are you going to do? You're going to get better at math. If you shoot the basketball, you will become a better shooter. That's a way for, that is a skill that you can get better at. If you take a thousand hours worth of shots, you will be a good shooter. Now, will you be able to get open? Maybe not. You might not be quick enough to get open, but you can learn to shoot the basketball. So we emphasize that. I, I, you know, if you're going to find a player and there's one skill, make sure they can shoot. You know, I maybe can diagram up something for them to be able to get open, but we want to make sure we can do that. So you got to look for specific players. 
You maybe are looking for a different type of player. Maybe you're looking for somebody that just plays defense or whatever. It's going to depend on you, but you've got to figure out what your style is and, and how they can kind of fit into that. Um, next thing is understand that success is not immediate. Okay? This is a difficult thing. This is me sitting in that locker room after the regional final going, I can't do this. I can't win. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. It takes time. It took Memorial 40 years, to, let alone get to the state title, to win one. Okay? And then we've been to the state tournament six straight years. Okay? We're one of five schools in the state of Wisconsin to ever do that. So it doesn't come right away. Um, you know, it was baby steps for us. You know, we were 7 and 14, then we were 12 and 10, then we were 13 and 9. The culture slowly started to change. We were 15 and 6. We were 19 and 4. We lost in the sectional final. I mean, we slowly got there. So, you know, it might be a 20 year plan for you, depending on what school you're at. It, it all depends on your situation, but you got to be patient, okay? Um, and it might take. 10 years to build the youth program up. You know, I was lucky that I had, I had a good group of players coming through. I, you know, I, I knew that there was going to be this one core group that was going to come through and help change our culture. You know, the Wesley Matthews and the Michael Nelson group, I knew that group when they were this tall, and I knew that group was going to come through and be special. And it basically changed the culture in our school. So maybe you got to cultivate one specific youth group or something like that that you know is going to come along. But you got to understand it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a while. Um, it's, a, it's a group mentality. You know, it's, it's that thing that it, it's going to take time. Um, and it, it may never happen, but, you know, you got to maybe find that specific core group. And that's what, that's what we were able to find. We were able to find one core group that we knew um, was going to be able to win us some games and, and get us over the hump and get us past the sectional final to the, to the state tournament and eventually to, to win one. Um, next thing. It's picking your style, <clears throat> okay? You got to pick a style you can sell and then one that, one that fits you, okay? You got to pick a style that you believe in and that you have players with um, and that, can, that, you can, that you believe in. Um, so pick a style that, that's, that's good for you, okay? My first year in Madison, we were seven, like I told you before, we were seven and 14. We were slow, we couldn't shoot, we couldn't defend, we couldn't get back, we couldn't, we couldn't do basically anything. Great, get a great group of kids, one's a dentist, I mean, they're, all great, they're great kids, but we weren't very good. What style did I play? I slowed the ball up, I played a 2-3 zone, and we came down and made 15 passes every time down the court. That's what we had to do to win, okay? So I had to pick a style that would allow us to get to that point. Um, what do we do now? Well, now I got guys that can shoot. I got guys that can trap. I got guys that can get up and down the court. They can rebound. We're playing a different style. Okay, um, you know, there's more than one way of winning a state title. Okay, you know, I, I play a very up style team. There's there's a couple teams in our state like Oshkosh West, Vin, uh, Milwaukee Vincent of, of old, who comes down and they and Appleton East and they respect the possession and they're going to come down and make 15 passes and they're going to get an open shot and then they're going to come down and play the pack line. There's more than one way of skinning a cat, all right? So um, you got to find what fits your program and your community well. Um, and it's going to have to adjust. Um, you have to adjust the system with different groups. I think as a high school coach, it's extremely important to adjust your community or your kids. Um, you know, I like playing the up style. I like trapping. I like coming at people. You know, we can separate. You know, I can play more kids. I like that. Um, but if I didn't have those players and I was, you know, in northwest Wisconsin and I had to come down and have a 30 possession game rather than a 90 possession game, I would do that if that would allow us to win. Um, so you got to pick a style you believe in that your kids can do and that you can win at. Um, you know, I can sell. I, I, it took a lot for me to sell that first style, but I sold it. I said, this is the only way we're going to win any basketball games, guys. You know, we're not going to win running against this team. We got to come down and, and, and respect the possession and take some time off the clock and shorten the game up. Hey, thanks for listening so far. We're about halfway home, so I uh, ask you to go subscribe. Hit pause for a second, go subscribe, leave some comments, um, and go over and check out coachmarket.net slash courses, see what our new course looks like, and uh, you know, then come back and make sure you watch the rest of the video and the rest of the, uh, or listen to the rest of the podcast. So um, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Leave comments and uh, go check us out at www.coachmarket.net. Thanks.
you know, so you got to believe in it, you know, even if quote unquote you don't believe in it, you got to try to sell it to the kids. Um, I think that's extremely important um, in selling a system and, and, and believing in it. And, yeah, and it's going to have to change. Maybe you see this youth group that's coming, all right, we're going to be able to trap and press. Maybe you slowly start developing that into your program. But it's got to be one that you can sell and one that fits you. Don't just pick a style because that's what you know. Um, and it doesn't fit your kids. That doesn't do anybody any good. You know, if you're running dribble drive and you've got four kids that are six, seven that need to be on the court, it's really not going to work for you. Um, you might have to adjust your system a little bit. So I think as a, if you want to win a championship, you've got to look at your talent. You've got to be willing to adjust to it. Um, next one is find a common goal and find a common theme. Um, you know, these things change throughout the season. Um, you know, <clears throat> I, I, I wrote this down because I wanted to make sure I said it, but winning is the only objective goal or objective thing you're judged on. Okay, so winning is only the object, only objective thing that the community, the parents, the kids, the paper, anything, that's the only objective thing you have. Everything else is subjective. How you pick your team, what you play, how you play, anything like that. So what you need to do is have some sort of common goal. Um, you know, you need to have something to rally against. And this year, obviously, our goal this year was we were the redeem team. We had lost in the state finals last year in overtime. You know, we wanted to redeem. We wanted to go back and prove to the state of Wisconsin that we were the best team in the state. You know, that was a theme that was very easy and a goal that we wanted to do. We wanted to win a state championship. I didn't hide from it. We just wanted to win it. Um, so I think you got to come up with something that the community can buy into. Our, everybody knew what we wanted to do. We weren't hiding from it. But I think you have to sell that to the community. You have to sell um, to your kids, to your family, that specific goal. Whatever that theme is, whatever you feel is important for that year's team, you really have to sell. Um, <clears throat> this, one's a, this one's a different one. And, and we do this, um, you got to plan for it. You got to plan. You know, and we weren't always planning to win a state title. We were planning on winning a conference title. We were planning on having a, st uh, a winning season. Whatever it is that you need to do, you need to spend the year preparing for it. You know, we spend the entire year getting ready for this year. It will be March 20th for being in that state championship game. Everything we do, doesn't matter how we're, get, it's how we're getting on the bus, how we're doing our pregame meal, how we're getting dressed, when we go to the locker room, you know, how we do bus trips, where we go, whatever we do as a team, if we go to a movie, whatever we do is planning for being in the, playing March 20th. Um, you know, when it gets to the state tournament week, uh, their, their entire week is planned, and I'll talk about that in a second. But what are your expectations? Are your expectations to win a conference championship? Good. Plan for it. What teams are you going to have to beat to, to win a conference championship? You guys, you, you can look at it and figure out which teams you're going to have to beat. We, we could probably tell you the 20 teams we would have to beat right now to win a state title this year. Um, so you've got you to gotta have expectations. You've got to plan for it. Um, every, every day you should be getting ready for it. Every day we talk about where we want to be, what we want to first do. We want to win a conference championship. We want to win conference. We want to win sectionals. We want to go to state. Um, don't hide from it. We don't hide. I mean, there's two thoughts about this. You don't talk about it, put too much pressure on them, or you do talk about it. I'm in the camp that you do talk about it. Um, and we were doing this before we were even going to state. Our goal is to go to state and win. Um, so you got to put players in situations that they're going to succeed you know, you're not going to tell a team that's, a, a, that's all 5-7 that we're going to be the best team in the Midwest, probably. Um, so you've got to obviously put them in situations where they're going to be successful. Um, you know, you might be a short-term goal initially, um, but you've got to plan for that short-term goal. We're planning on cutting the nets down when we win the conference championship. Okay? Why do we cut the nets down when we win the conference championship? Because we want to cut the nets down when we go to the state tournament. We want to cut the nets down at the state tournament. We're planning that along. So I want that seed planted in those kids' head that, hey, we're cutting the nets down. We just won a conference championship. We'll put new nets up. I'll spend the $10 and buy new nets. All right? Because why? Because in another three weeks, we're going to cut the nets down when we win a uh, sectional championship and we're able to go to the state tournament. And when we win the state tournament, we're going to cut those nets down. So you want to put them in situations. You know, kids are... We, you, kids are don't have a long extent, uh, uh, attention span, but they want to know what you want from them. You know, if your only expectation is to get third place in the conference, that's what they're going to think. We should be in third place. All right? So I think you've got to set those expectations. But everything should plan for winning a championship. Whatever the championship that may be, everything should plan toward that. 
Um, there's nothing we do during the year. It doesn't matter if, how we're sitting in a room doing our scouts, how we're preparing, like I said, how we're doing a pregame meal. Everything is, okay, guys, we're practicing it Saturday at 10 because that's what we're going to do when, we, when we're at state tournament day. You know, championship Saturday, we're going to practice 10 o'clock on Saturday. So we talk about that all year, and I think you can't hide from it. If you're gonna if you're gonna have a winning program, you got to talk about how you win and what you want to do when you win. Um, once you get there, I got a good story with this one. Once you get there, you got to act like you belong. Okay. Um, now the worst thing you can do is get to the state tournament and the bright lights, and you're thinking, oh wow, I'm in the state tournament, yay. Okay. You know, you got to first thing you got to do is stay in your routine. You know, we're lucky we're in Madison. This is where the Wisconsin State Tournament is, host, is uh, played at the Cole Center. So we're able to stay in our routine a little bit better. You know, we don't go to a big court. We stay in our gym. You know, I'm making sure the kids are in their classes. Um, you know, we'll go do our shoot-around the day before the state tournament, and then we'll come back and go to class and have our normal practice and do our normal pasta dinner and, and do the things that we normally do. But we control everything, okay? Once, because we've been controlling everything all year, you know, we control everything. We do road trips. Um, last year we went to St. Louis and Minneapolis, and we give them an itinerary. You know, at 10 o'clock you're going to be doing this. Uh, at 11.30 you're going to be eating lunch. At 2 o'clock we're going to do our shoot-around. At 4 o'clock you have a nap. I mean, we plan it out on all our road trips when we do that. We do the same thing in the state tournament week. You know, we meet the Sunday before the state tournament. We hand them a packet, and their week is planned out. They know when, the, they know when media's coming. They know when... Um, they're going to eat, they know when they're going to be together in team, they know when they're going to go watch the other teams play, they know when they're going to go to class, everything. Um, so we control everything. You know why? Kids like that. Kids like rules, kids like control. It makes them feel comfortable, it makes them feel like you're in control, and I think, you know, as a coach, you really need to do that. This is stressful enough. You know, grandma's coming from Texas to watch you play. There's enough nerves there that if you can control those things, it makes them feel better. Um, no, I put no pitchers on the Cole Center floor, and the reason I did that is our first year we went to the state tournament. Uh, you know, I won't name the school, but we had our shoot around, and then I stayed around and watched some other schools and their shoot around. The team that we were playing the next day did their shoot around for like 15 minutes, and they took out cameras and started taking pictures of the Cole Center, you know, um, on the floor and all that. You, I could tell you right then that they were just excited to be there. Okay, you can't. You gotta. You, you gotta turn that switch from the joy of getting to the state tournament. Okay, let them enjoy that for 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever you need to do. It's really hard, and you as a coach gotta turn that switch back and tell them, "Hey, we got here, but now we want to win this thing." Um, and that's a that's a hard thing to do for for kids. Um, but we don't want to take a picture at the Cole Center until we win the thing, until we're host, hoisting that trophy above our heads. That's when we want to do it. So we really got to communicate and, and, uh, and talk about that. But you got to act like you belong, okay? It's no different than, you know, you go to a nice, nice hotel, you got to act like you belong there. Same thing here. You got to act like you belong um, at the Cole Center, okay? Next one is rest. <clears throat> um, you know, fatigue makes cowards of all of us. It really does. Um, this I've gotten better with, with age. You know, I used to be, uh, we're going to have two, and, two hour and 20 minute practice. I don't care if it's February, we're going to lift weights, blah, blah, blah. It's a long season. They're sick of you. And you're probably a little bit of sick of them. Um, you got to overtrain them. I have been lost in the gym before the game's played. Coach gets mad, puts them on the line, blah, blah, blah. We're literally down to an hour and 10 minutes probably come March. We've been beating them in, hurts, whatever. You know, don't overtrain your players. And this is hard, okay, because, gosh, this is the most important, most important games of your entire career, and you feel like you got to get all this stuff in. But, you know, from somebody that's been there, you got to rest them. you got to let them get their legs back, men get their physical part back. Let them go home to their girlfriend or talk to mom. Don't overtrain them. It's important to <clears throat> is be aggressive. How you do, be aggressive. You know, I'm under the theory that you got to go at teams. You, you, you got to be the one that, that comes at them. The style we play, we're going to trap you for 32 minutes. We're going to come right at you the whole time. You know, be innovative. You know, we, we have some special defenses that I don't think a lot of people know what was specifically what we do. We're innovative a little bit. You know, we'll throw a little trick defense. Um, you got to play to win a state title, okay? Um, no one's going to give you a state title. I bet I say this 50 times throughout the season. No one's going to give you this game. Um, you know, the, the state tournament, 
the games at the state tournament usually in big close games think about nfl nba they all come down to that fourth quarter they all they're, when they're close they all come down to a few possessions and we talk about that you know no one's going to give you anything in life no one's going to give you a big house no one's going to give you an expensive car you know most people aren't don't aren't given those things they got to go out and earn them it's the same thing on the court you got to go out and take the state title if you're playing in the state championship game the other team there is going to be good they're not going to be a 2 and 25 team they're going to be a good team and they're going to want to win it just as bad as you so the team that's able to do that, the team that's able to c control those possessions are the ones that win the state title. It really does. It comes down to a handful of possessions. Over the last six years, I can tell you exactly where we've lost the state title and where we've won it. You know, there's two or three possessions here, two or three possessions there. If they go our way, we win it. If they don't go our way, we lose it. So I think, you know, you've got to talk to the kids throughout the season that, you know, you play to win this thing. You know, here's what we've done all year. We're going to keep doing it. We're, you know, we're going to be a little innovative. You know, if you're going to throw something special at them in the state finals, you better have done it sometime before then. Um, but you got to play to win it. Don't just play um, not to lose. And I think a lot of coaches do that. Um, give them a reason to win. I think this is a really important one. And let me just move my things here. Um, you got to give them a reason. You got to give them a reason to to, to win it. Um, something to believe in you know we live in a society of 30 second commercials you know the web text messaging everything's very quick you know you got to find a hook that they can they can buy into my first year that we won the state tournament you know we had lost the previous year in the state finals my star player had broken his hand in the in the state semis and we ended up losing in the finals by 25 something like that and you know had some foul trouble so the next year, what, we, what, we, what was my hook? My hook was, come on, you guys are the group. This is the group that's going to make history for Memorial. The first one to ever win it. You guys, no one can ever take that away from you. We talked about that all year long. You know, this year, what I did was, we, I, like I've told you before, we lost in the state finals last year. This year we came back. I played on their emotions. Um, you know, kids were crying on the court after we won the state title this year. And the kids, that, you know, the kids I coach don't cry, um, but they were crying because I had played their emotions all week. I, you know, my, my, two of my star players, Jerron Maiman and Vander Blue, had been playing together, and Russell Henderson and Zay. They'd all been playing together since they were five or six years old. And two or three weeks before this tournament started, I started playing on those emotions. You know, I said, Vander, you know, you're going to play for the Trailblazers someday, and Vander, you're going to play for the Nuggets someday, and you guys are never going to be on the same team ever again. This is the last time you guys are ever going to play together on the same court, put the same jersey on. You know, I played that for three, four weeks about, you know, this is it, guys. We lose, we go home, you never play together. You know, you play in, down at Penn Park or on, on the playground, but you're never going to play together in a game that means something. This is the last time that you guys are ever going to play together in a game that really means something. So, you know, I think you've got to find a hook. You've got to find something. Okay, this is, my, these are my, this is my family. These are my 15 guys. How am I going to give them? I got to give them a reason to win. Um, it's that quick society we live in. If you give them a hook, give them something they can believe in, it will take the pressure off. I'm winning. I'm going to win this thing for Vander. I'm going to win this for the guy standing next to me. I'm going to win this for the history. Um, if you give it, they don't think about. Oh God, this is a really big game. It takes the pressure off them as players. Um, next one is keep learning. You know, I I think this is important. I went to a, I went to a clinic and. Uh, a couple weeks ago and you know I think you can always you can always keep learning something you know the dribble there's always innovations in this game you know the dribble drive is the new kind of innovation in the game of basketball um, you know like I was saying before I, I coached under two or three Hall of Fame coaches um, when I was in Wausau I, co I, I was under, learned a little bit from one of them and I took a piece from took a piece from Larry Tramberg took a piece from Mike Fisher and I took pieces that I like and it in what I do. We, we got to stick together with people that are successful today. You know, football, we use pass and you know what makes a tough football and put it into our basketball program. It's an important thing. Other are important when you're learning this game. As two young coaches, I think it's extremely important to keep learning, um, to keep to keep expanding your horizons, all right? So, you know, we all think we know this game very well. Um, but I think you always have to keep learning. Styles, I learned a synthetic division. Always learn something. And when you think you know everything, it's time to get out. Um, things are always changing. You know, people used to play basketball like you know defense like this, and they used to shoot the ball like this. You know, things have changed over time. 
So I think if you got to stand in front of that curve, you know, scouting has changed. You know, scouting's done on DVDs now. It's done on the computer. There's editing. There's the, I mean, all. If you don't stay on that, you'll be back to ER. You know. Um, so you always got to keep learning, always stay on that front end of that curve if you want to be successful. Um, this is something I think every young coach or every coach should do is the outside evaluation. You know, I've been, I've been lucky. I've had like two or three different people outside of our program that don't know our playbook, don't know what we do, don't know our personnel per se. Come watch us play and evaluate us. Um, they talk about our strengths and weaknesses. And the reason I do that is I think you kind of get this pack mentality when you're spending time. And like I said before, the plus is I've had my coaches together for 11 years. We know each other, blah, blah, blah. The problem is, is we get together and we all start thinking the same. Okay? Um, you want to think kind of like a think tank in, in Silicon Valley. All right? You want people outside telling you new things you need to do. You know, the problem with Microsoft is it's so big and they're not thinking. It's all these little computer companies that basically are able to do the innovative stuff. It's the YouTubes and the Twitter and all that. So I think the problem is sometimes you start putting kids in boxes too. You know, this kid is only to do this. Well, maybe if you have a couple people come out and evaluate, they'll go, that kid can really rebound. Why isn't he playing more? So I think it's important to get that outside evaluation. I'm not sure a lot of people do that, um, but it questions what you're doing. You know, it, it, you got to question what you're doing. You know, we've been pretty successful. Like I said, you know, two gold, two gold balls and three silvers, six straight trips to the state tournament, but I'm still questioning what we're going to do this year. I'm still thinking, you know, do we have to tweak this? Do we have to change that? Do we have to change our offense? Blah, blah, blah. Because I don't know. You know, I think you have to have people looking outside in, questioning what you're doing, and maybe looking at the players and the, and the people on the floor differently. And if they do, I think you'll be pretty successful. But that's not an easy thing for, for, for you to put yourself out like that. But I think it will really help you win a championship because it's going to make you keep tweaking what you're doing all season long. Um, over prepare, okay? I'm going back to that, going back to that locker room um, when, when in that 7 and 14 season, you know, I, I, on the bus ride home I was talking to to uh, I think it was Jeremy or something and you know, we're talking about the stuff we can control. We can't I can't make it I haven't made a shot in 20 years on a basketball court that means anything. Um, but I knew there was one way that I could I could outwork people. I knew I could outscout them and outprepare for an opponent. That's the only thing I knew. I knew I wasn't going to outcoach people in our league. I knew I wasn't going to necessarily have better players. What I knew is I could outwork them. I could outscout them. I could spend more time preparing everything for my guy so we knew what some Prairie was going to do or Middleton was going to do. I could, get, I could prepare for those specific teams. You know, we hand our kids a scout tape. We give them a scouting report. We handle it like a classroom. They bring a binder. They take notes. You know, it's just like my math classroom. It's no different. I think you can prepare them. Now, to be honest with you, probably 80% of this is for me and my staff, and probably 20% sinks in with, in their heads. Um, but I think it's good that, you know, hey, we've walked through Germantown's out-of-bounds play, or we know what Beloit's going to do in this situation. At least we've talked about it. So when i got to take that time out and i got to get them together, I'll say, you know what, they're going to run purple here, or they're going to run this specific play and we've already talked about it, they've already seen the tape of it, they've taken the tape home, so they know what to expect at that point. You can never over-prepare. Two, there's two camps of thought here again. One camp is, I'm just going to do what I do and I'm not going to worry about my opponent. The other camp is, well, we're going to tweak what we do a little bit because we know what the other team's going to do. I'm in this camp. I'm in the camp that, I, you know, I, yeah, we're still going to do what we do, but we're going to prepare for you. We're going to get ready. Um, for your zone defense, we're going to get ready for your offense, whatever specifically that you're doing. Um, so I think you can't over prepare. You can't spend too much time watching tape. Um, next thing is you got to teach your players how to win. Okay, um, and this is going to depend on where your program is. You know, my my first couple years when we weren't winning basketball games, I had to dump a couple teams that I didn't think we could beat on our non-conference schedule, and I had to go out and get some wins. I had to go out and find teams that I can beat that team. I can beat that team. And, and get some wins because I think what it does is it teaches the kids uh, the, how to win, okay? Um, it teaches them that this is what it feels like. Now, where my program is now, you know, like I told you before, we're going to Detroit, we've been to Minneapolis, been to St. Louis, now I'm traveling, now we're doing other stuff to prepare us for the state championship. Um, I'm not necessarily looking for wins, you know, I'm not convinced we're, we might not win any of our non-conference games this year. 
But I think when, especially when you're building from the bottom up and you haven't won, you need to go out and find some wins. You need to convince your kids that they're good, that they're going to win basketball games, that they're going to be successful. Um, and, you know, that's a big part of, uh, of what we do um, and what we've done over in the past. Um, expect the unexpected. <laughs> and then I got a couple funny things with this one. Um, if it can happen, it w if it can happen, it will happen. You know, this year the state tournament, we we beat Bayport in the state semifinal game. I walk in the locker room after the after I talk to the press, and I got two starters in the locker room throwing up. Okay, my first year coach and I would have freaked out. You know what I did? I grabbed our man, our our trainer, John McKinley. He's a great guy. I said, John, you got to get him to the hospital. You got to get him IVs. You need to take care of him. You need to get him on Tamiflu. You need to do whatever we need. We need them healthy for tomorrow. Um, you know, lots of things happen. You got to expect the unexpected. This is where you got to develop your depth, what I was talking about before. You got to develop that 7 through 12 to be ready for the big game um, because you never know. You know, my, our first year, probably my best team ever, we lost in state finals in, in, uh, in 2004, and Wesley Matthews broke his, 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 um, his hand in the state semifinal game. And, and I'm sitting there, and I, I was in denial. I, I didn't really think he had broken it. I thought he jammed it. I thought he'd be okay. He ended up having eight turnovers. In, he never had eight turnovers ever in his career, ever. Uh, um, but, he, I, you know, I, I wasn't willing to accept what had happened. You know, we've had twisted ankles. You know, I know Keaton Ankerville played with a broken foot in the, in a stress fracture. You know, you, once you get to the point where you expect the unexpected, you know things are going to happen. You know people are going to twist their ankles. Um, you can control those things. Um, develop your depth, control any outside factors. I make my guys wear ankle braces. Um, that's something I feel like I can control. You know, uh, was it last year or the year before, Jerron, a week before the state tournament, twisted his ankle. He had an ankle brace on. The reason we were able to have him and he was able to have that tournament trail is because he had his braces on. You know, the things that you can control, them wearing hats when they're leaving the building, eating properly, all those things that you can control, try. There's going to be things that are unexpected that happen. You've got to be ready for them and, and develop your depth. Develop 6 through 10 because I'm telling you, if it's a four-month season. At some point, you're going to need 6 through 10. It might be to only win a conference championship. might not be to go to the state championship, but you're going to need those guys. Somebody might get the swine flu or get sick or something. Who knows what's going to happen, but you've got to, be, you got to expect it and you've got to be prepared for it. Um, that's all about preparation. Um, find leaders. Picking, your t picking the team is probably the most important day of the year for me. Okay, You know, that number 14 and 15 guy at the end of the bench, that's extremely important. Those guys got to know that they're 14 and 15. They got to understand their roles. You know, my rule of thumb in, in the past has always been, you know, it's hard for me to keep seniors that aren't going to play. You know, I have done it in the past, and I've also cut seniors that, ha that, that weren't going to play because there were juniors or sophomores that were better. Um, so, you know, picking your team is extremely important, okay? That day, you know, I, uh, Bob Suter, who's a Hall of Fame coach in the state of Wisconsin, always told me, you know, picking a team is kind of like making soup. Some people like a little bit more potatoes. Some people like a little bit more onions. You know, that, that day is going to be the, the 15 people or how many people you keep. That's going to be the people you spend the next four months with. And they better get along, and they better understand their roles and all the things that we've talked about. Um, talk on and off the court. Pick your general carefully. Um, you got to find a leader that's going to be willing to talk. You know, if, if, probably a subscript of my pet peeves is kids that don't talk on the court. Um, but that's something we can normally take take care of. But you got to pick your general carefully. Um, you got to pick that guy that's going to lead you to the promised land. You know, Wesley Matthews and Dron Maimon are two leaders that were able to take me to a state championship, take our program to a state championship. They were unselfish players. They were generals. They led. Um, you know, they got in people's faces. Um, you know, a story, both times we won the state tournament, in 2005 when we won it, the, the group got together and they, they had a meeting. They called it. They didn't invite me. They called each other out. There were tears. There were people pointing at each other. There were people that were upset. Um, and then we ended up going on a run and winning the whole thing after that. Um, same thing ap actually happened this year when we won it. They got together after we had lost the game and, you know, called each other out. And, and who did that? The leaders did that. The leaders developed that um, and, and, and basically called each other out. So I think that's an extremely important thing 
um, as far as a, as a coach and, a, and as a player that you need to talk about, okay? Um, you need to find that unselfish player. You need to find that person that's going to lead you, that's going to call out Johnny when he's not playing defense or he's not doing his wind sprints. You need to find those leaders. And the day you pick the team is extremely important because you're picking your leaders, you're picking your role guys, you're picking the people that are gonna, you're going to spend the next four months with. Um, visualize. This is... This is one that we talk about. We, we, we got to see it and we got to sell it. Okay? When, we, when you walk into the locker room, it says Road to the Coal Center. That's where we play our state championship. Got a picture of it. That's what they see every day. You know, we talk about it, we sell it. You, know, you have to convince your guys. You know, our, our first couple years, it was a picture of the conference championship trophy. It wasn't a picture of the state tournament trophy. We weren't ready for that. You know, whatever you need to visualize, put in their locker, send it home, text it. You know, all, you got all these new tools now, Twitter them, whatever you need to do, Facebook them, but you need to sell it to them. You need to sell them, and you need to, they need to see it. You know, I, I, I text my guys all the time, you know, are we going to win this thing? Yeah, how, how bad do you want it? Are you willing to work hard? Whatever it is, you got to sell it to them. You got to convince them it's the most important thing in the world at that point in their lives. Um, and then, you know, Locker rooms are great places to redo your locker room, put pictures up of, of what you want to do and where you want to achieve. Um, and then the last thing is you got to be a little lucky. Um, you know, it all, I said this before, but it always comes down to a handful of possessions. It really does. Um, you know, it comes down to, you know, those handful of possessions that we talk about during the season. And, I, and I'll pick a game in January, and it will be a three-point game, and I'll take a timeout, and I'll say, you know what? It's going to come down to two possessions here, whether we win the state title. And we're playing, you know, I, you know at Janesville Craig on a Tuesday. So, you know, you got, it, it always comes down to it. We always play a possession game in, in practice. You know, you got three possessions to score four points, or you're going to lose the state title. So I think you really need to talk about it. Um, kind of in closing, those are, those are the kind of the key points. And let me make sure I haven't forgotten anything that, 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 that I've talked about um, you know, those are our core values. Those are the things that we talk about. I think this is a very psychological game. You know, I didn't talk any X's and O's here at all. Um, you know, and I'd love to talk X's and O's. But, you know, it, we live in a society with, with kids that they're playing AAU and everyone's telling them how great they are and that they should all be starting and blah, blah, blah. I think as a coach, it's your job to get this group to come together, okay, to be a cohesive group. And I think the 20 points that we've come up with over time will get you to that point, will get you to be successful. Um, and if there's anything, obviously, that you don't understand here, feel free to email me, um, coach at memorialbasketball.com, coach at memorialbasketball.com. I'll try to put that in the DVD and my contact information. If you have any questions about the stuff that we do, you know, you want to see, like, what, you know, our itinerary looks like at the state tournament or, you know, specific things we do with our playbook or any of the, any of the 20 points that we've talked about, feel free to contact me. I, I, you know, I love this game. It's given, given so much to me and my family and, and, you know, I, and, and to the players in, the, in our community that if there's anything I can ever give back to you, feel free to contact me. You know, I think, uh, I think these, are, these are what I've said is, uh, is Memorial's core values. You know, we've been successful. We've won state championships because I've gotten our community, our kids, our parents, and everyone to buy into these things. So, um, you know, there's no magical thing that's going to help you win a state title. Um, and, and every situation is a little different. But I think if you, if you start from the ground up, you pick good players, good coaches, um, and, and, and a good school, I think you can be successful. So again, thank you very much for having me, and uh, have a great night.